What's not a miss is the ladder match for the Intercontinental Championships next. And man, these guys have their work cut out for them. 10 years prior to this at WrestleMania 10, two guys went out and had the most famous ladder match ever, Scott Hall and Shawn Michaels. And now in front of that same audience, they're trying to top it, but with a different style ladder match. We've talked about this a lot. The physicality here has been getting stepped up week after week on the August 17th episode of raw DX and the nation fighting a street fight, which the nation wins, but rock rams a ladder in a triple H's face. So he's bleeding from the mouth. Here we go. Now we've got a ladder match and Hunter gets the win after 26 minutes and Meltzer would write, they had this seven and a half foot ladder stationary that I figured they were going to name Silva. Helmsley sold his knee, which he had an MRI done on earlier in the week, but not as much as you'd think. There was nothing spectacular along the lines of the Shawn Michaels ladder bumps that some ladder matches are famous for in the WWF, but this was the match that stole the show. Some of the spots where the guys were climbing the ladder were way too slow, but other than that, the effort was tremendous. My V got great heat for working on Helmsley's leg. He continues to give a rundown. But it's a glowing review from there from Meltzer. He gave it four and a quarter stars. He would write, even though he was a heel, you could really sense Maya Villa had totally won the crowd over as being a great performer with this match. You and I have touched on this before. And I think a lot of people looked at this as sort of the barometer. And both of these guys are poised to be a top guy. Who is it going to be? And while Hunter won the match, it feels like Rocky won him over. Because Hunter wins the IC title, but in just a handful of months, the rock's going to be the world title. Is this the match that sort of made the rock for Vince McMahon? He was rock was already on his way, but you go back and you look at the entire presentation of this match. We had Chris Warren and the DX band come out and sing Hunter out into the ring. And I forgot you know, you hear that song so many times, but to hear Chris do it here, they had the band. I thought it was one of the best renditions ever. Um, let me just tell you, I go the other way. I thought this was a studio song. I thought the live performance sucked. I know that, you know, I loved it. he's no longer with us and I shouldn't shit on it, but I'm just saying I did not fucking like the live performance. I much preferred the actual recorded version. Why did you like the live so much? I, I loved it because the some bitch could sing and I liked the, just the raw guitar and everything in there. I, it was different. And I liked those guys being out in the ring and it was, and it was different and it was good. I liked trashing all the instruments afterwards and the whole presentation was different and it was unique. Then you get into the match and it's symbolic because the match was different and unique. It wasn't the high flying suicidal bumps. It told a story and they started that story from the rock taken out triple H's knee. So you, you knew about the knee earlier on in the night. You, you told that story. They had something to work and it just goes to show that you don't have to do all those crazy bumps. You don't have to do, all the -the over-the-top theatrics to tell a great story and have a great match and get people invested in the product. And that's what they did here. They told you a different different story in a ladder match, and everybody believed it and everybody got into it, and it was logical. Um, I got a laugh at the, oh, well, they climbed up the, the ladder too slow. And I'm watching this match and watching the guys go up the ladder. First of all, I'm terrified of heights and I have been on a ladder in the ring. So me going up a ladder in general on stable ground is terrifying for me. And I go up it slower than what they were doing in the ring, but to do it in a ring where it's shaky and there's things going on, but it also is the the drama of a match. You're telling a goddamn story here, folks. So it's that inch by inch, he crawls and he climbs. And is he going to get there? Is he not going to get there? So that's always funny to me when these people go, oh, go. First of all, go try and climb a ladder in a ring while somebody's bouncing around and the damn thing's given on every step. That's 
terrifying in, in and of itself. And at the end of the match, when the referee climbs up the ladder about three steps to raise Hunter's hand, and you see Hunter grab the grab the ladder like, dude, <laughs> what the fuck? I'm on top here. It's it's just it was unstable. But again, I say all that to say the match was great, and they told a hell of a story. I, I somehow goofed up there and said that that WrestleMania 10 match was 10 years prior. I guess I was thinking about WrestleMania 20. There's only a handful of years here. You know, you're talking about 94 versus 98. Were there concerns? Maybe not from a rock standpoint, but Hunter, I mean, he, he obviously knew what that ladder match meant to Sean and the company. Were there concerns as to whether or not they could pull it off and that they had to sort of do something different? Cause they knew it really couldn't compete if they tried to just copycat. Not really. They were, prepared to go out and tell their own story. And it wasn't, Oh, I'm going to go out and try and outdo what they did. They were going to go out and tell their own story and have the best match for their story. And and that's what they did. And I think that it held up in comparison, different, just they're different Mm -hmm. matches, different performers. Why do you think their feud isn't really talked about more than it is? They had a hell of a feud in 98. I mean, with the whole spoofing, that they did where with DX spoofed the nation. And that's been super controversial because you got white dudes and blackface and, but they feud it all, but uh, not talked about compared to what? And well, I just mean like, you know, I feel like it gets glossed over a little bit in this era. I mean, they did a two out of three falls match at fully loaded. I mean, there's a, a whole string of matches here where they're working together. And in the end, I guess, you know, Hunter wins the series, but rock wins the push. What was their relationship like behind the scenes at this time? You know, they weren't going out and having a beer at the end of the night. I don't, they weren't friends, but they were professionals that worked together. And, you know, to me, this is one of the issues and angles that I constantly, uh, bring up to young talent is an example of hard work and an example of being real because they didn't like each other. And so many of the promos that you heard, man, they, they were shooting with each other in a lot of ways. They made it real and you felt it. So uh, that's why I I was saying compared to what, because to me, it's one of the just angles and, and, and it's one of the rivalries that does live on kind of like Austin McMahon. And I do look at rock and triple H as is, is being early on with this. And it carried over to the WWE championship after the fact, even many years later, when rock came back from Hollywood, they had a little face off backstage. The, the audience erupted for it. Um, I think that people do remember it for me, at least it was a big part of the attitude era. Cause right underneath Steve and Mr. McMahon, you had that rock triple H deal rumbling the entire time. 